Okay, um, just want to touch on some basics when handling a sword. The most important, uh, one of the most important things when handling a sword is that your posture must be correct. And all too often I see people holding swords like in a front stance. Now, not that you shouldn't, but initially you should think about presenting a very limited silhouette to whoever is looking at you. So the basic posture or stance done in most sword systems uh, with the sword in middle position or chudangamai as it's called or middle posture is sangaku dai or triangle stance. Now if you look at this this line in the map going between my legs uh, my lead leg uh, the inside edge of my feet is along that line and my heel my heel is also right on that line okay so that's the first thing and your feet should be about it could be just a little bit ab above or beyond uh, the width of your shoulders the rear leg is at a 30 degree angle okay 30 degrees all right so this forms a triangle. So if you look at this, okay, it forms, it forms that triangle, which is why it's called Sangaku Dai, okay? Meaning three-sided triangle, all right? So um, once you've done that, your hips should naturally be aligned to your stance and your shoulders should be directly above your hips. But too often I see this stance being done and you know if you hold the sword in middle position what happens is that people turn their upper body towards the sword even though their lower body is in this triangle position so what you should do is maintain the hip and shoulder alignment right which which means it's like this and if the sword is in front of you which is in front of your dantian or dungeon or hara, like it's growing out of your hara, right? If the sword is in front of you, then you shouldn't, it shouldn't be you turning your body, squaring off your shoulders. What you do is you relax and disengage your left scapula and just reach for the sword. So this way you maintain that silhouette in relationship to the tip of the sword. Okay, not this, but this okay so while I'm on that um, let's talk a little bit about if I did this from the side if I did this from the side at all with the sword as though it's growing out of my hara right and I'm grasping the sword in a natural grasp where the this part the web of the the index finger and thumb is directly on top of the sword and the same thing with the lead hand okay you should be able to put an egg right here or right there also there's one hand distance between one hand distance between the front grip and the rear grip at the end of the sword okay in a graduated grip which means relatively speaking 175 50 25% in terms of your grip. So all the work is really being done by the last two fingers, which is the ring and pinky fingers, okay? So just like this. Your arm isn't straight out. Often I see the arms locked out like this. No, no, not really. Your arm should be relaxed with your elbow suspended, and it should form a nice sloping curve from here to the tip of the sword. The tip of the sword should could be at the level of your throat or at the left or between the eyes. So once you've done that and you're not square, you'll find that when it's time to engage the sword, right? When it's time to engage the sword, you can use your hips. Your legs should be relaxed, hip relaxed. You bring the sword up, your hip turns. You drop the sword, your hip rotates to the front. So this way, 
the sword is being driven by the rotation of the hips and observing the right posture will, get, will make you a smaller silhouette because you square like this, I'm looking at it, more for me to attack. Remember, posture is everything. It's a spatial adaptation to your opponent and your environment. So you want to provide as much, as, I mean, as little opportunity for your attacker to pierce or to cut, okay? So once again, okay, not this, but maintain your shoulder and hip alignment and just disengage your scapular region and reach for the sword. 